good afternoon everyone. I'm Kathleen Taylor and with the Nevada Women's Business Center and I am so excited to have a really good friend of mine and a woman who I admire, uh, who has such fantastic uh, savvy business sense, Miss <laughs> Danette Pro. So it's good you. to see you again. Thank good you so be much here. for being here. here. Definitely. Absolutely. And I'd like to thank all of you for, um, for tuning in to this live stream webinar. And we're going to talk about uh, the food truck industry. And Danette, she has a extensive experience in the food truck industry as an entrepreneur. And I'd just like to um, share a couple things with our audience uh, about your background. And sure. basically, um, Danette is the owner of the Funnel Cake Cafe. Yum, 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 <laughs> and um, it's been a quite, a, quite a journey, you know, for you in that industry, and I'm just really fascinated uh, to, to hear more about it. And just to give you a little background about uh, the Funnel Cafe and its mission, um, the mission is to serve a quality product with great customer service, while also helping our helping the community through fund, fundraisers, donations, and creating business opportunities for others. So, with the Funnel Cake Cafe, um, Danette, uh, could you please um, uh, give us some uh, like highlights of, of the the whole process of what you've gone through in the food truck industry? Oh, sure. Well, you know, we started with a pop-up tent, the canopy, that, and we started doing the festival. So the first mm -hmm. uh, probably six years of the business was kind of a hobby just for fun. Uh -huh. And there wasn't a whole lot going on here in Las Vegas in terms of festivals or places to go sell. So after about six years of that, then I finally decided I saw the potential and then left my job and mm -hmm. focused on it full time. So we didn't just write, start out with the food truck. Uh -huh. It was a process. We had to first see that there was a big need and things would um, go well and, and, and work in terms of a food truck. Uh -huh. And really the reason we graduated to the food truck was mainly to give us more opportunities to sell. So when you're doing the pop-up tent, you're very limited. You okay. know, you're limited to just the festivals uh -huh. or um, certain events. It's very hard to do catering like that to come out with a pop-up tent and coolers and everything. I'm glad that you said that. Yes. So, yeah. so for, for people that are looking at the culinary industry and they mm -hmm. want to go into catering and they have this idea of, well, I'm going to integrate a pop-up tent too, so what is your, your, you know, trial, based upon your experience, you know, right. with that, what do you, do you think that a little bit more thought should go into that? Or Absolutely. maybe you should just kind of like avoid that if you're going to try to do catering. Well, absolutely. And I think people have different ways of catering. You know, if you're coming in, you're bringing the, the dishes and you're setting up and you're doing a whole table setup. Mm -hmm. That may be different, but for us, it was having to fry. Okay. You know, and because all of our, mm -hmm. our funnel cakes come out fresh. I yes. mean, we do them all fresh. We don't freeze and then come uh -huh. and do it. We will do deliveries where they can be heated up. Okay. So we have done some catering jobs that way as well, but that was learned through trial and error. Oh, okay. <laughs> but um, so with us, it's very different. It was hard for us to go do a pop-up tent You're and right. roll in the coolers and, and things. It just wasn't practical. Mm -hmm. And so when we were kind of looking for other opportunities to generate revenue, that's when, you know, we start thinking, well, let's, how can we get into the catering business and how can we make it a little bit easier and how can we not only catering but get into more um, food truck events because at the time when I left my job, the food truck industry started to pick up. Oh, wow. So Very good. So I kind of saw that as well. Uh -huh. And um, that's when we said we got to invest in a vehicle, a mobile unit. Yes. And I say a mobile unit because it wasn't, we actually have a concession trailer. Okay. And we and, had to really think about that, right? Uh -huh. So there's good and bad in both, but we opted to go with the concession trailer mm -hmm. being because when you have a food truck, you have a lot of mechanical problems that could go wrong. And so in our mind, we're thinking, well, if the if our truck breaks down, we just rent a truck and pull the trailer, and we're not totally out of business. Uh -huh. But there is good and bad in both, um, you know, on the bad side of having a trailer not everybody can drive that trailer okay 
And so, um, you know, right now my husband does it. He's mm-hmm. the one that usually goes out. He's great. I don't know what we do without him. He uh-huh. goes out and he backs it in. I mean, he's a pro at it. Wow. So, you know, it, it works with us. It works for us that way. Mm-hmm. So with that, we've been able to do a lot more of on location, private okay. party catering, okay. a lot of corporate catering. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, we have um, a lot of corporate catering where they'll do um, employee appreciation or uh-huh. customer appreciation, mm-hmm. and or they'll have a special event going on with a theme. It could be a carnival theme. Well, that's and, fun. And so where we can go and fit right in. But, Definitely. Um, we've worked with a lot of major um, businesses here in Las Vegas. so. And how long have you been in the industry? Like from, I think about, what, 10 years altogether, it's, right? it's, Yeah, it's a little over 10 years oh, now. Oh, wow. I know, it went fast. I can't that, believe that's it. That's great. But yeah, it's a little over 10 years. Uh-huh. Um, and again, you know, the first six years, I don't really count those as being in business because it wasn't, you know, mm-hmm. we didn't have a whole lot going on. But seriously, for the last four, four and a half years, okay, it's been more of, you know, it's grown into more of a business, mm-hmm. and we've got a vision, you know, that this is not the end of it. We're, it's going to go on and on and uh-huh. on, and so part of our mission is not only, you know, like helping people or training them or giving them jobs, but to uh-huh. actually bring them in and it to be possibly become a career for them. Oh, sure. Or an investment for sure. them. So that's uh-huh. kind of our vision as well. And, you know, that's uh, that's your way of get, giving back to the community as well right. and helping uh, the, the infrastructure from an economic mm-hmm. perspective and growing that way and creating jobs or exposing people to the opportunity of entrepreneurship. Creating futures and jobs. Right. I like that. Yes. <laughs> uh, so um, in reference to kind of like starting out with a food trailer or a food truck, Mm-hmm. Where, where do you find, you know, that, that type of vehicle? Um, and also looking at factoring in the, the cost of the inventory, of the ingredients and everything, mm-hmm. and how you have to um, uh, uh, include that into the price so that you, you at least break even or you make a profit because there, there, are, times, there are times when you know, people that, that we run across, they say, okay, we're just going to charge this and it'll be fine. It's what our competitors um, uh, mm-hmm. charge, but it's not taking into place like the little details. So I, I, I know I'm kind of like throwing things at you, but um, just to kind of take us through the process of how does one go about purchasing the transportation mm-hmm. and then how does one go about you know with the pricing of the uh, of the product product you know mm-hmm. um, as far as the tra- first thing I would say is know what you want to do and the, it, the let's go back to the very beginning uh-huh. I think it's important to really do your research very good go to a lot of these events where yes. they have the food trucks mm-hmm. and find out what they have and try to do something different aha. Uh-huh. Something good uh-huh. and different, yes. um, because that's what's going to draw people to your truck. Right. Is if it's something good or something they're curious about and they want to taste, they're going to draw. Then once you have that, mm-hmm. you know exactly what kind of truck you need. Right. For us, for instance, we couldn't just go out and purchase a truck. We need a deep fryer. Right. So that's we very, could. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's extremely important. Don't just buy a truck and say, I'm going to go in the food business. Know what you're going to sell exactly. and what you're going to need. We had our trailer custom built uh-huh. because it was very hard to find. We needed a big um, fryer, a right. deep fryer. Mm-hmm. And we needed it laid out because we have a process the way we go. Because uh-huh. one thing you have to remember, too, every step is money. Uh, it, it costs very good. So yes. you want the best flow possible. Uh-huh. So from the order to the the preparation to out the door, you only want it to take a few seconds or minutes to get it. You know, you don't want yes. people to have to wait too long. Yes. And you so the flow's got to be right, and that's why yes. I said it's important to know what you're going to sell first, and then go in and find out if there's a truck out there, and then look for a truck that meets your needs. Uh-huh. If you don't find one, then have it built, and then have it customized. Um, 
I think that that is extremely important because mm -hmm. if we had just bought a truck and it's not set up, we would have had to walk over here to fry, come over here and top, and then come up, and uh, and we flow really easily. That's mm -hmm. how we move our line pretty quickly. Yes. Uh, and then you have to search someone that does a really good job. And I would mm -hmm. I would get referrals from people. Sure. From the other trucks that are out there. Ah, okay. Get referrals. Okay. Um, we had issues with our concession trailer, uh -huh. um, so that was a learning process. But overall, it's it, you know it's good. Um, I would have gotten referrals at the time. There weren't a whole lot of people locally doing mm -hmm. it, and some people have gone out of town to get their trucks. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, yeah. A lot of people have gone out of town. And okay. So they have them on sale. I mean, they sell them all over the internet. So you can probably find one, mm -hmm. but it's more important to most important to know what you're going to do. I agree. Now, uh, for for some people that have this creative space, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in reference to creating their own food truck, I've seen along the along the years um, a couple of food trucks that were formerly school buses. Oh, yeah. And they've been yeah. converted into mm -hmm. a food truck space like the, the smaller ones. Yes. So um, do you think, you know, from your own experience, with using that model and then just building it out, do you think that is more uh, cost effective? Or do you feel that try to get a food <clears throat> truck that has, that has as, as much of the amenities as possible mm -hmm. and then make your improvements so what are your your thoughts on that yeah I think it, it's going to depend on what the truck costs you mm -hmm. and what you need and how much um, customizing you need done uh -huh. to it if you get a truck that's just a shell and you can go in and customize it however you want it mm -hmm. might be most more cost effective to do that uh -huh. or if you find a truck that's already you know, it's got all the equipment, but mm -hmm. you got to move this out and only replace it with a stove or a fryer, then that might be more cost effective uh -huh. to you. So, so it kind of depends, and that goes back to um, knowing what you're going to sell. Exactly. And knowing everything and leaving yourself room to grow. We've kind of outgrown our concession trailer because we got umpteen different toppings, you know. So, yes. And there's so many more we want to do. And so, but we're limited, uh -huh. you know, on the space. Yes. Which is good. I mean, we have 17 toppings, so. That's impressive. Yeah, so wow. <laughs> it works It, it works out well, mm -hmm. and it's just enough. And, and we, another thing we've done, too, when we add another topping, mm -hmm. we come up with something that we already have that we can put together versus ah, going out and making more space and spending good. more money. Very and good. So you have to be really strategic about that, uh -huh. your, your menu and everything is so. And how do you, um, how do you go about in um, getting your, your, uh, your clientele or, or um, getting admitted, uh, the, the whole process of, of being admitted as a vendor to an event or to a carnival or a farmer's market right. that's right. food truck friendly. How do mm -hmm. you go about that? And that's, that's a good question because a lot of people call mm -hmm. me about that. Uh -huh. And they, they have, uh, they're, they're starting either a tent set up mm -hmm. or they're starting a food truck and they mm -hmm. want to know how we find out about all these events. Uh -huh. Well, through the years, it's been some researching, and unfortunately, there weren't a whole lot of things online, and still isn't. It, it's like mm -hmm. finding a needle in a haystack. Okay. But um, I've, over the years, have developed mm -hmm. certain ones that we do all the time. Okay. And then what happens from that is that people see you, and then they come to you. Ah. And they ask you to be at this event. Ah. And, and thank God, now we don't really have to search. We have... The, the events that we pretty much do mm -hmm. on a regular basis, the larger events like we do the, the Bite of Las Vegas, we do the Tastes and Sounds of Soul downtown. That's great. Um, we do, um, what is it, Life is Beautiful. So a lot of the larger mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, the catering, you know, where they'll call us. Excellent. And we've done some schools, and, and that's just from reaching out to them in the beginning. Ah. Okay. And then another school hears about it in another school. And that's pretty much how we've built up. That's fantastic. And so it keeps us booked up, which is a good thing, which is, you know, it's great. So uh, I'm just curious, with, so with the, with the process of, let's just say, 
uh, let's take the, the schools for example. Mm -hmm. What was the process in connecting with Clark County School District? Uh, is there like an application process or a vendor procedure that you have to go through to be considered to serve, mm -hmm. you know, the um, uh, on, on on the school premises or within the district as a vendor? Um, yeah, they do. They do have paperwork mm -hmm. that you have to fill, fill out to uh -huh. become a vendor. Mm -hmm. um, and then they want to know that you have your health permit. Mm -hmm. So you have to have that updated and current. Uh -huh. You have to, on some of these events, have liability insurance, which uh -huh. is, you know, you have to get commercial insurance to get that. So, right. and usually the minimum is a million dollar policy. Sure. So you've got to have that. And then it depends, but like the whole school district, yeah, you know, we do have certain paperwork that they require uh -huh. and that we have in their file. And then the following year, if they need updates, then we send that to them. So we're pretty mm -hmm. much in there. Uh -huh. And then a lot of the um, uh, dealing with a lot of the larger businesses, mm -hmm. like Cor when resorts, for instance, yes. you're registered in their portal. Right. So that if you know if they need this product or something, they may contact you. If there's mm -hmm. anywhere else on the property where they want funnel cakes, and they'll see that we're in there and registered. Uh -huh. So you do have to be registered for the school. Some things you have to be certified, different certifications. But for the schools, it's pretty much just the paperwork. Okay. And for the larger festivals, they want your you know your health permit. It's mm -hmm. got to be updated, and you definitely have to have that insurance. Uh huh. And that is pretty much it in their regular mm -hmm. um, application. But it, it kind of depends on the event, really. Right. Um, so, for uh, and you bring up a very good point towards the end, and it depends upon the event. Mm -hmm. And this is where, yes. um, w would you suggest that um, people that are in the food truck industry or want to embark in that industry? And it, uh, I think it goes back to what you said earlier in doing yeah. your research. Um, and could you talk a little bit about about yeah. how you conducted that research, you know, like your target market um, mm -hmm. and, you know, things of that nature? And, and also, um, did you do anything to kind of test, you know, your, your products, like with tastings or, or demonstrations, kind of like that trial and error to kind of build that customer base? Yes, we did. Actually, our test was just going out and doing it. <laughs> <laughs> because again, and we actually uh -huh. started, uh, there was a big event and mm -hmm. it was um, that it came downtown and we said, we need to do something to capitalize on that. Well, everybody likes food. Yeah. And at the time there was, I always say, you know, when they, people ask, how did you get in the funnel cakes? I, I feel like we found a need and we filled it. Yeah, you did. Because at the time, yeah. right, nobody was doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of a good, we already knew people like funnel cakes. And yes. yeah, it's kind of like, yes. <laughs> right. Oh, so yeah. the events were actually our tests just uh -huh. to confirm, I guess you could say sure. that they not only like them, but want them here. Uh -huh. And so we did that. And then from that, it kind of grew little by little. That was the first one. And we do, um, it's Black Image Magazine, Kimberly okay. Bailey and Charles, oh, um, great. Charles and Kimberly Bailey. Um, that do that event down there and they actually do it twice a year so theirs was one of the first ones we went into oh congratulations and yeah it went really well excellent and so that was kind of a kickoff but again we mm -hmm. were working full-time jobs so it was kind of a you know just uh -huh. fun to do sure and then another event came up and then i thought let me find more there gotta be more uh -huh. and it just kind of grew from there mm -hmm. and then i saw the potential potential we started with strawberry and powder that was it hey I'm fine with that. I'm uh, yeah. fine with that. Yes. I know. Yes. There, are, there are a lot of people that just want powder. They don't want anything mm -hmm. else on it. And that's okay. Uh -huh. But we, we eventually break them in because <laughs> we'll throw a little tester on the side uh, of, of one of our other uh, toppings on the menu. Uh -huh. yes. They're only powder because they don't know about the others. Right. You're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because, frankly, the first time I've ever heard of a gourmet funnel cake was with with right. you, because <laughs> yeah. my whole experience has been with powder. 
That was it. it. Mm-hmm. Yes. Or um, just strawberry. Yeah. And I want to say we were one of the first to really come out with a variety of toppings. But so uh-huh. I, I've got to tell you, when we started adding the toppings on, nobody else was doing that. Now you'll find in other places that they mm-hmm. are, you know, they'll add other toppings. And they're pretty much the same toppings we're doing. Oh, okay. So uh, now the s'mores, you know, you wow. can see other people doing the s'mores. Right. And that was, an, a, that was a idea of my son's. Oh, good for him. So he came up with the s'mores. And we do all kind of, you know, it's a family thing. And we Mm -hmm. one day it's like, oh, I bet this will be good on, Uh uh, you know, on a funnel cake. Um, And then we open our store. We have another new topping coming up when we open our store. Wonderful. And could you tell us more about about your store that's opening up? Yes. Congratulations. We're so excited. Right. So it was from that that tent to the trailer, and it's time to upgrade. It's time to, Uh well, next level, I could say. Not really. Great, but um, we are opening hopefully in the next couple months in Town Square. Excellent location. And where it is, it, it's a really good location. We're actually going to be in the kiosk. It's um, oh, the yes. building kiosk right across from the Apple Store and oh, okay. behind Brio. Oh yes, yes, yeah. very good. So we'll be opening there soon. They they've moved the, some of the equipment in, so we're getting That's closer wonderful. and closer. Yes. Yeah, it, it's really. Um, I can't tell you how excited we all are. To oh, I can be imagine. Able. But we will still have the mobile going. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. we are, um, you know, we're still going to have uh, do the catering and the mm-hmm. events, and we're not going to stop that mm-hmm. and and keep the store going. And and it gives us it's it's so exciting because it gives us a stationary location. Yes. Where I don't have to continue telling people well, we're not out today. Can you know we'll be out next week and uh-huh. by then they're like oh well that's not helping me now. <laughs> you know, yeah, so. and you can definitely capitalize on on that segment of the market too. That, yes. You know, okay, we have a go-to place now, so when we have an inkling for funnel cakes, we know where Absolutely. to go. Right. Week. Yeah. We have some place to bounce them back to. Uh-huh. You know, and we'll probably offer, because we're going to cross-promote, you know, so we'll oh, sure. offer some bonus incentives for coming back and also. You know, it's gonna um, be fun. speaking of, like, uh, bonus incentives of, mm-hmm. you know, drawing people to your product, I always thought it was really smart and savvy um, that people that are in the barbecue industry, mm-hmm. and they kind of, like, not necessarily how their grill's going with barbecue, but just having that aroma going, yes. you know, and, and the smoke and, you know, you could smell it in the air. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what are your thoughts about um, appealing to a person's sense of smell as a type of marketing strategy? Because the smell of funnel cakes, you know, yes. fresh funnel cakes, yes. it's like you know that it's like, okay, I know what that smell is. Yeah. Let me follow the smell and get my funnel cake on. <laughs> you know? And they do, yeah. <laughs> they do that. We hear that all the time. Is, we smelled you all the way across the park. They smell that yes. aroma, and it does catch them. You know, when you, mm-hmm. when you smell it, and then you come over and you really want one. Right. And then when you see all the delicious toppings, you can never get bored coming to Funnel Cake Cafe. Excellent. Because Excellent. if you tried, you know, just strawberry, the next time you come, you can try the lemon or you can do oh. bacon or you could do PB&J. Oh, you have the, the, the savory sides too. We with have the, the sweet and savory. Wow. Yes, Excellent. we do. And we're adding um, a chicken on when we open our store. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a you know what? That's like a play on chicken and waffles. So the chicken exactly. funnel cake dynamic. Mm-hmm. That sounds fantastic. And it's very good. It's really good because we like we always test things out. You know, we'll come up mm-hmm. with something and go, oh, that sounds good. But we'll have a taste setting, testing party, uh-huh. and you know, have family and friends over to taste, and we get everybody's opinion before we actually put it out there. Excellent. So um, we do the sweet and savory, and then we have different you know sweets. Mm-hmm. The s'mores, the banana split, and mm-hmm. that's one of my favorites. And I even love making that one because you can ah. make it really pretty. Uh huh. Um, so there's about we got about seventeen now. That's 17 impressive. Different really different toppings. Yeah. You know something. You know you're gonna hit someone's taste buds out of that right. selection. Right. Right. And that's uh-huh. that's pretty much what we try to do. You know, if somebody comes and they don't want just strawberry. They've got something else to choose from. Mm-hmm. If they don't want anything on it, they've got something. To, mm-hmm. You know. They can just go with the straight funnel cake. Would powder. you 
Would you suggest uh, in the like the development stage of um, m the mobile mobile truck food industry mm -hmm. to have somewhat of a strategic plan or a uh, yeah some type of business plan, so to speak, that you can kind of build off of, just to kind of give you that roadmap of where you're going and where mm -hmm. you're headed. Yeah. Because um, there are people that know how to cook, know how to barbecue, know how to do this and that and the other, but right. they may miss that business piece. Mm -hmm. So could you um, expound upon that? Oh, that's extremely important. Mm -hmm. I can't say how important that is because you have to know how you want to, what you're going to do with it. Are you going into it for a hobby or is it a business? Do you want to grow from it? If right. you're just going in for a hobby uh -huh. and you just want to go here and there and hit a couple different places, well then pick up a license and do that. Uh -huh. And then you continue to do that. But if you're going into it as a business, mm -hmm. then you need to research and make sure, first of all, your product, yes. your, your audience, mm -hmm. and where you want to take the business. Right. Because if we... My business plan was to ultimately get a store, and it's a further, you know, it goes yes. further than that. Uh -huh. But I went in, okay, we've got this tent, and mm -hmm. then when I started really focus on focusing is when I really put together the business plan that I wanted to see. Sure. Or, you know, what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, I had to know, you know, exactly what I wanted to do in terms of do we want a truck? Do we want a concession trailer? Uh -huh. What does it take to get a truck or concession trailer? Are right. we able to just pop up and set up anywhere? And mm -hmm. that's what a lot of people think. And it's not, it's right. not that simple. Right. Um, you know, you can only be there for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only be so far from a restaurant. And these are all the things you have to, yeah, that you have to really uh -huh. go in and research before doing it. Now, they do have a food truck lottery where they rotate the trucks in different areas. So you'll oh. see trucks parked out. Uh -huh. And, you know, somebody will say, well, we saw a truck parked out there where they're in the lottery. Got it. Got we it. didn't get into the lottery. Oh, right. You know, um, so because, you know, we're doing other things and catering and stuff. So it's mm -hmm. very important to know your path and where you want to take it and where right. you want to go with it. Mm -hmm. We wanted to take it to the store level. Sure. So the business plan that I put together mm -hmm. showed that this is where we're going to start. This is how we're going to generate the revenue. Uh -huh. And this is how we're going to get to that point. Right. And and then in that, you kind of know. you got to know, too, what it's going to cost you. Exactly. Uh, people don't think about all the extra costs. Yes. You know, um, your licensing, mm -hmm. your, um, your product. And even mm -hmm. your product, it's not just the funnel cake. Well, it's the powdered sugar that goes on. It's the fork. It's just the, the napkin. It's the plate. It's all of that. So you want to try to keep your overhead costs down. So you need to research that and find out what every little um, every little piece of food is going to cost you. Yes. yes. Every little piece because your menu. I have a mentor, um, Andy, and he always says your menu is your, your product. I mean, that is your revenue. It really is. It's your revenue. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and it is. And so you have to think about all of that. Because starting out, we didn't think about, you know, oh, wait, yeah, we do pay for the plates, so we have to consider that in the cost. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so. Uh -huh. But thorough research and then know where you want to go with your business. If right. it's just, you just want to pick up a few festivals or here and there and get in there, then that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. But if you want to take to the business level, mm -hmm. then you got to, especially the numbers. Yes. You got to get an accountant. CPA can yeah. really kind of build it and and start thinking in a business sense, you exactly. know, versus, um, you know, a carnival here and there, uh -huh. right? You know, exactly. and take it further. Yeah, there is a big difference between um, a hobby and a business it that is. you're investing in, and um, what's your advice in someone transitioning from? their nine to five job into going full time into their business. Yeah. Um, Cause there's some people that think that, oh, you know what, no one is doing this, it's gonna sell, it's gonna do really great, I'm gonna quit my job mm -hmm. and boom. You know, yeah. that may, may or may not be the best strategy. Right. So what's your advice on that? 
before you walk away, mm-hmm. know yeah. <laughs> first have your plan. Yes. And don't just walk off and say, this is what I'm going to do. Even mm-hmm. though I've done that in the past. I've uh-huh. never been afraid to step out on faith and just uh-huh. do it. Yes. I don't know that that's the smartest way because I've been through trial and error. And uh-huh. now, you know, thank God, over the years, I've mm-hmm. kind of learned some things. And But it, it's important to know what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And then I always say, use your job as a... Uh, board to jump from there exactly like if you have um, if you take a little bit of money and set it aside like mm-hmm. this is going this is my business fund right and then that way the job even if you don't like the job mm-hmm. you have a, a light at the end of the tunnel okay, you because do. you're building it over here and say okay and you have this goal when I get this much find out what you need uh-huh. before you step out and then start putting that money aside mm-hmm. Uh, and it, even if you don't have all of it, get your credit together so that when you step out, you can get that loan to, to pick up the rest that you don't have. Mm-hmm. And then that way you're, you're together and you kind of know and you feel more comfortable stepping out. Yes. And I can't say enough how important it is to research. And now there's so much for small businesses, so yes. many um, seminars, mm-hmm. um, classes. Mm-hmm. I took the next level class, which oh, um, it's excellent. Oh, it's great! Yeah, yeah. They cover everything in next everything. level. Everything, yes. And Sean Dale Newsom was the instructor, and it was it was fabulous because we learned everything from yeah. he brought in, uh, you know, um, legal. He brought in accounting. He oh. brought in, and there were guest speakers that came in and spoke to us about mm-hmm. you know different ways. It's very comprehensive. It is. Yes. It is, mm-hmm. and it was really you know worth the investment worth the investment. Oh, I agree. Uh, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. um, I'm a former entrepreneur myself, and I enrolled in a Next Level class, uh, our program, oh, yeah. at a small business development center when I lived in California. And um, You were one of the speakers, weren't you? Didn't you come in to one of them? No, maybe it was another class there. Maybe it was another class. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember you coming in and speaking. Uh-huh. That's, that's when I met you, where I met you from first, I think. That's right. Yeah. And I don't Oh my gosh, that's right. You did come in yeah. and speak. And huh? that was, yeah, that was fun. I remember that. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Informative, I, yeah. Uh, from from someone that, that went through the Next Level program, if you really want to invest in your skill set as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. Something, recommend. yes, that you want to take a deeper dive into it, then definitely the next level program would I have I would highly recommend that. There's so much help now, and mm-hmm. you know, I, I'm a member of the Urban Chamber of yes. Commerce, also the Latin Chamber of Commerce, uh-huh. and I, I get involved in a lot of the networking mm-hmm. and, and just being in front, and, and it's been a tremendous help in growing my business because it's not only mm-hmm. about you putting together your product and finding places to go with uh-huh. your truck and all. You go and by being a member, mm-hmm. I've been able to get a lot of business from that. Right. Just from being out and talking to people yes. and then it's from one thing and the next mm-hmm. to the next, the next. Mm-hmm. That's the only reason why we're in WIN. Uh-huh. Because, and it was from, you mm-hmm. know, the Urban Chamber of Commerce. And congratulations on that. You Thank know, you. Being yeah. in WIN as yeah. well yeah. with your product. That's right. excellent. Yeah. And, and that's not easy to do, and we no, wouldn't be not. there if we were not a member because, it, mm-hmm. or I shouldn't say we wouldn't be there because I'm a research person. I know uh-huh. how to call people and say, who's in charge of this? Who yes. should I speak with about that? So I don't have a problem doing that, but I bet you it would have probably taken me years to get to that point because I've heard of some mm-hmm. people that are trying mm-hmm. to get in and it's taken mm-hmm. them, you know, quite a long time. But mm-hmm. I say that to say get involved in things like that. That helps too. Even if yes. you're not started yet right. and you want to start, yes. it helps to be around you know, like-minded people. I agree. And yeah, and, and, and networking. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, networking. and uh, please take Danette's advice here. Um, mm-hmm. If you are, if, if you're, if you're comfortable, you know, with your culinary skills and your art, you know, artistry. Um, and you know, with food preparation and all of this, you know, you know the, the the craft itself. Mm-hmm. In order to connect, connect your growth, your vision, the, your business uh, success, you have to connect with people. You have to connect with with uh, potential clients and with mm-hmm. like-minded people. So, what you were saying about 
joining organizations such as right. the Urban Chamber of Commerce, the Latin Chamber, or other networking groups. It really is critical, especially in this it town. Is. It it's is. about yeah. who you know and right. you know who knows you. So the relationship building is, is really critical. It's, it's, it is. And not only that, too, that, that's a big part of it. Very, very important. But another mm -hmm. really, really important part is branding yourself. Very good, yes. And, and, and this is what happens a lot of times is people go into an event and mm -hmm. they figure, well, the, the person putting the event on, the promoters or whomever is putting it on, mm -hmm. it's up to them to bring the people there. Well, when I do events, I let people know we're going to be there. Excellent. And I, I Excellent. don't sit back and wait for them to bring in yes. this, you know, even though there is built-in traffic, mm -hmm. but draw them to your particular truck. Right. You know, draw them there. Mm -hmm. And if you're out there, even when you don't have an event, um, you know, as you know, we're big on social media. Yes. Which yes. has gotten us to, I really believe, a big part of what's gotten us to where we are, where we're mm -hmm. able to brand ourselves okay. and people coming into town and they're already familiar with us and they know us. Yes, that's huge. It is. That really and, is. And that's, that's really important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I find that that's what a lot of small business, whether it be a truck or whatever, don't do enough of that. Or they do it and they don't see the immediate growth. Yes. Uh -huh. And then people tend to give up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. If you believe in what you're doing and your product, then stick with it. As soon as you give up, maybe that time where you're going to break, it's Ex going to break. Exactly. So, um, so would you say that uh, patience is, you know, something that, that, that that's a must, so to speak? It's a must. It's uh -huh. a must, yeah. And what other um, things uh, or, like, key points would you like to, like, highlight, mm -hmm. you know, in closing about about the food truck industry or uh, right. embarking in this industry? Uh, pretty much everything that we went over, I think, mm -hmm. are the main points, is to first, first start, just kind of recapping what's so important is first start, know what you want to do, right. what you want to sell. Yes. Once you have your product uh -huh. and you know what food, if you're good at cooking and you specialize in this one thing, mm -hmm. um, it could be fried chicken, but do it different. You know, right. there are a lot of people that do that, but do it different. So be different. Uh -huh. yeah. Then once you figure out what you want to do and you want to get into the food truck business, research and find out, is a concession trailer best for you? Do you have somebody to drive it? Do you have something to hook it up to? Or a food truck better for you, where it's easier to teach somebody else to jump in the truck and drive to different locations mm -hmm. and easier to move around. And then once you do that, find somebody that knows how to build it or find one that builds, that's built and fits your need. Mm -hmm. And then, and also in doing all of that, research areas or the places where you can go sell. Uh -huh. Go out and do the research at some of these uh, festivals and find out what people are selling. Uh -huh. Look at the trucks with the longest lines. Ah. Yeah. No, with the longest good. lines and uh -huh. find out what they're doing and then try to tweak it or do something better. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, research your licensing, what it's going to cost you. It's all about numbers. You know, it's yes. a, lo a large part of it's about numbers. Mm -hmm. But sit down and do your numbers and, and find out where your suppliers are right. and what you need for, for this. And get it all together and do your business plan if you want to go into business if it's a storefront you want to go to then do that there it's gone both ways where some of the trucks have moved into brick and mortars yes uh -huh. and then in the beginning when the food truck biz trades came there were brick and mortars that were closing buying food trucks right <laughs> yes <laughs> so um you know it, it it works it's a great industry to be in you mm -hmm. just have to know you have to plan it. You have to be smart about it because it's not just as simple as driving a truck up to the sidewalk and serving. Exactly. It's not. And you could be in events. We've been in events where it's been slow. But then we get a call and say, well, we have this event going on. We saw you at that. So even if it's slow, you might get residual from it. It's, you know. And that, take, and that, and that comes into play with the patience factor. Patience. Uh-huh. It is. And and it, it does, it takes a lot of patience, you know, but you have to be out there and you have to market yourself. And you have to realize too that you have to wear a lot of hats. Yes, you do. And I did that now, you know, I've got family, you know, now I'm able to delegate because people have, you know, mm -hmm. left Grown. their jobs uh -huh. and have been able to 
work, you know, closely. Like my daughter, she's uh-huh. a lifesaver. You know, Excellent. now she handles the human resources side of it. Oh, wow. But, yeah, I had to give it, I had to delegate. I You can't, if that's, you. That's key. It's so key because mm-hmm. if you think about a business, mm-hmm. a real business. Yes. Well, they have a human resources department. It's they lot. have an accounting department. Mm-hmm. They have a legal department. They have all these different departments. Mm-hmm. Well, you are. All those departments. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's hard to keep up. I had to stop going out on the going out to sell because I needed to focus on growing the business. Wow. So wow. these are the things you got to think about. Mm-hmm. If I kept going out there, I would have to leave the office, go work the truck, come back, and I'm exhausted by then. Oh sure. And there there are nights that you know, I go to bed at three and get up at five. But, I mean, these are yeah, the sacrifices yes, you make. Yes, exactly. The sacrifice. That's, so. that's amazing uh, in, in reference to the, the whole process that you've gone through in your own growth and development. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like you find another gear when it's, when it's your own, so to speak. Yeah, right, yeah, mm-hmm. you do, mm-hmm. you do. And it's important to be able to delegate. For a long time, I didn't want to delegate the accounting part of it. I go, I have a CPA. I don't need to do that. Uh-huh. But but it is, it, it's important to do that because you can't wear all the hats. You can't be a pro in everything that you do. Right. And that's not really my lane. So I, I got to get out and give it to somebody else, you know. And, and my daughter is fabulous because she does, you know, she does a lot of our um, – social media work um, oh, wow. she does the human resources and uh-huh. I'm trying not to put too much on her because she's got a three-year-old that's more like more like a 30 year old <laughs> he is so adorable but you know it's hard for her too you know mm-hmm. but but we're making it work at the family pulling together my husband it he's just so heaven sent you know I, so I think it's so wonderful when you have that type of support network mm-hmm. you know with your with family and, and with friends um, especially when you, yeah, yeah when you're embarking upon you know on a, your own business venture mm-hmm. because then there's the uncertainty you know from yeah. you going from an employee perspective and that you have a nine to five you know the check is coming in so to right. speak yeah but this it's a whole nother mentality and to have that that support mm-hmm. you know it's it really is vital and now th- that's all we all we both. I mean, mm-hmm. this is all we have mm-hmm. now. This uh-huh. is our job, my husband and myself. Congratulations! So he, yeah, he uh-huh. ended up walking off his job as well. Uh-huh. But we had to get to that point, exactly. You know, and I just told him, hold on, just hold on, man. You, you know, you'll get uh-huh. to, we'll get to that point. Uh-huh. And so, you know, he's been patient too. And you do have to have somebody that that is willing, that believes in you, yes, and willing to work with you yes. and and give you that time to do what you, mm-hmm. you know, want to do or you feel like it's right. And he's been on board. I mean, he's just like, whatever, he, he trusts me. <laughs> you know what, Ed, you, you really, you, you, um, you said a key word, key, key word there, and that's trust. Yes. You know, and, you know, yeah. trust, uh, trust that, you know, that, in, with your decision making, mm-hmm. with his decision making, the the, the balance, um, it really is vital to um, yeah. to the business. And if you are thinking about partnering with someone in a partnership, you know, um, with the, right. any business, whether it's a food truck or whatever it is, you really do need to be on the same page. You know, uh, you with that. Right. Mm-hmm. You do have to be because after all, I mean, it, and trust is a big deal because we're talking about our financial, right. uh, you know, yes. situation or stability yes. or how. But he knows mm-hmm. that I'm very much. I believe in saving. I believe mm-hmm. in having things together. Even though I've walked off jobs without actually knowing what I'm going to do, I just uh-huh. knew I was going to do my own business, and sure. that was back in the day. And I learned through trial and error. Mm-hmm. But I always knew that. I wasn't going to work for somebody forever. Sure. And it's just finding the right thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to do um, stained glass. So I walked off, yeah, and did that for a little while and found out that that's too expensive, that people can't afford it. So go back to work. Uh, And it's (laughs) just a process. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's okay. It is. You know, it's okay. And I, yeah, and I tell my kids, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've raised them that way. It's like, it's okay. Wherever you are, learn everything there is to learn there. 
degree. You may want to own one of those places yes. one day. Yes. And and so I've never been afraid to do that. Mm -hmm. And if I were, then we wouldn't be, you know, where we are. You you got to step out and just do it if you feel like you you've got it, you know. So do together. you um, do you feel that you have to have some degree of fearlessness? You, you do. Know, yes. You know. So. I, Sometimes I think people overthink. You know, yes. you have to be smart about it. Mm -hmm. But people overthink, and and we have this. We're in this frame of mind that we have to have that nine to five, or we just can't make it. Right. How without having that nine to five? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes you have to walk away from a lot of money to go back down to a little bit of money to right. build back up to it. Yes. And I did. I was doing great with uh -huh. radio, but. Mm -hmm. I was doing great for someone else, sure, and it, and it was good money, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's like, I want to make good money, but I want to make it for me and have something for my kids. And mm -hmm. So if you're in that frame of mind, don't overthink it too much. You do have to be smart about it, uh -huh. but, but that's why a business plan is so important, mm -hmm. because if you put down a business plan and you know you're at this point in your plan, well, then you know you have this, or even right. if you have a job and you're uh -huh. throwing money on a side to save. Mm -hmm then you feel a little more comfortable, uh, yes. you know, that you're going to yes. be able to get away from that job. and uh -huh. you have to be, Instead of sitting back going, I want to start my own business one day. And, you know, I'd like to do this, but never making that move. Right. Because you exactly. never know. And if you make exactly. the move and you fail, so what? It's okay. You pick yourself up and you right. think that wasn't it. Yes. Right. You just move on. Yes, you do. You <laughs> and that's on. really how I look at it. I, so I really do I. Do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important because the nine to five is designed to do this, the hamster on the wheel. Yes. Like you're struggling to get ahead, uh -huh. you know, and jump off that wheel. Uh -huh. But if you don't see, you know, a place to jump, you're right. going to stay on that wheel. Absolutely. I, I like, I like yeah. that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this all the time, yeah. So, yeah, you, you have to be fearless, you know, to a point. Don't be, don't get yourself in a bind, but um, know that if other people can do it, you can do it. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, and um, like you said, there's lots of resources that people can uh, can take advantage of at uh, their score. There, there's the oh, Small yeah. Business Development right. Center. There's uh, the Nevada Women's Business Center. Mm -hmm. um, in reference to helping people with entrepreneur development, uh, funding, we're an alternative uh, lender as well mm -hmm. for, for startups and established businesses. Right. And our services are free. So uh, that's what a lot of people Please take advantage yeah. of that, right? There's a lot of free service out there, a whole mm -hmm. lot more than it used to be. Yes. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's just finding it. And, and mm -hmm. during, through your research or networking, you'll find it. Yeah, I agree. You'll find it. I agree. So, well, this it's much is, easier. This has been a fantastic conversation, oh, and I I'm, I'm so uh, excited about your growth and development and going through your, your journey of, um, of a pop-up tent to the food trailer to yeah. being at Wynn, and now you're your own uh, storefront in Town Square. I think right. that's fantastic. Oh. Really. Thank you. Thank you. It's always fun coming to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, how can people contact you or uh, find out more about the Funnel Cake Cafe? Yeah. So, yeah, please um, stay connected mm -hmm. um, because we'll be announcing our grand opening when we know uh -huh. the exact date. But we're all on social media. So we have a Facebook page, which is the Funnel Cake Cafe. We also, uh, a lot of people subscribe to our email. We only send email out to let people know where we're going to be. And the easiest way to subscribe to it, since everybody's on their phone, is to text Funnel Cake Cafe, all one word, to 22828. And then you're on automatically. Or you can get there through our website, which is brosfunnelcakecafe.com or funnelcakecafe.com. It's probably uh -huh. the easiest. Okay. So, well, you know, e either way, I'm uh, excited about uh, definitely supporting your business and Thank having you. some fantastic funnel cakes and um, having you on again just to kind of like, okay, so what big thing are you doing now or, you know, or, you know, some uh, pearls of wisdom to share. So 
Thank you That'd so be great. much. Come down the store and do your show. I would. Oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> we do it on the patio because oh our store is not going to be a walk-in, but it's you know we have patio. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Like that. be good. Totally, yeah. yes. Be good. Yeah, thank you for that. Great idea. So, yeah. so uh, you thank you so much for thank being you. here. Appreciate this has been it, wonderful. Kathleen, thank you. Yes, it has. And also, uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this uh, live stream webinar with our featured guest, Danette Bro with uh, the Funnel Cake Cafe owner and uh, entrepreneur extraordinaire. Sure, thank you. So <laughs> if you have any questions, uh, please give us a call at the Nevada Women's, Nevada Women's Business Center at area code 702-734-3555 or check us out online at www.nevadawbc.com. Thanks so much. Take care and try to stay cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Gotta do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yay. Good. This is awesome.